and no ethnic group or race is without genetic weaknesses. So analysis of many different societies and polit political groups such as the Nazis were simply erroneous. They were totally off base. They just they were ignorant, if you want to put it lightly. Now, we're not done yet <clears throat> because after that map I showed you, more happened. Subsequently, in the following years, people started migrating all over the place, up through Africa to Spain on on up. And here's some of my ancestors ended up down here. A lot of them, they went up over to Africa and to Ireland. That's where a lot of my uh, genetic close relatives are now. And this was, uh, you can see the mixture going on. And even recently, the Ice Age, everyone that was up north had to migrate south because of the glaciers. And then after it was over, they all started migrating back up. So we end up having tremendous mixtures. So if we take any two Europeans or people from European ancestry, which a lot of you in this room are, and when they do genetic analysis, and they've done this on hundreds, they find out that the average European woman comes from seven major tribes or migration patterns. And some of these are at tremendously different time periods. Mixtures. So my wife and you, all women in this room, you're not purebred from anything, you're a mixture. And men, you're no different. Men, you're from the same number, if not more cult, uh, tribes, you might say, uh, areas. Now, some of these studies are interesting because they kind of give indications that women, once they moved into an area, they stayed there. They didn't move after that. The men, uh, the genes, the markers, seem to migrate all over the place and wherever they went, they made it, reproduced. And I used to say breed, but my wife said, that sounds like an animal. And I said, Liza, we're animals, but she doesn't, I have to be careful. So <clears throat> anyhow, none of us are, uh, none of us are of any way purebred. There's no such thing as purebred. And the one other point I want to make is, is look what happens if we go back to our ancestry. Okay, you go back three generations, you've got eight great grandparents. And then you go on down the line here with the generations back, each of you, this is simple math. Get down to 25 generations back, you've got 30 million ancestors. There's no escaping it. You have that many. And if you get down to 30 and 40 generations, then it gets impossible because you have either a billion or a trillion. Well, there aren't that many people ever on this earth living or dead. The point is, back there, people had to start marrying each other, cousins of what, uh, 30th removed, whatever. But uh, it gives you an idea of how many ancestry, uh, ancestors you have looking backwards. Now, the last conclusion slide is purity of race does not exist. It can't. All populations mixed with others, especially the men, uh, wherever they coexisted, and even modern man and Neanderthal. They have recently found this year major studies that's now been fully accepted in the anthropologic societies of where their men have about 5% of their Neanderthal DNA in them. Yes, they were able to find a lot of Neanderthal genome, parts of it, and sequence them and match them up. They did this with women, mitochondrial DNA, and they didn't see any link. There may be because it's not a big piece of DNA, but the man, they found it. And so some of you women, if your mates or husbands act kind of weird sometimes, you can say, well, they're acting like a caveman. They are. I mean, parts are true. Other conclusion, Europeans, America, Asia, and Australia, even Africans, are continents of healthy, energetic mongrels. We're all mongrel dogs. But I kind of like that, because mongrels are pretty sharp dogs, you know? I mean, they, they are it's a lot of times better off than the so-called purebreds. And folks, all humans are related. That is an absolute fact. So everyone you see or meet during your lifetime is a mongrel who is your cousin at some level. Now, the final conclusion, and this is that not only is a matter uh, of acceptance of differences, and that's what we hear a lot and read a lot, and that's true. It's important to accept people that are different. But I think that'll, to help people accept that is the fact is awareness of who we are. Our genes say we're all the same species. We're all related. Now, that doesn't mean you have to want to marry someone of, uh, of, that looks quite different from you. That's up to you. That's a personal thing. But don't look down on them because there's the, you're looking down on yourself, folks. So there is a perceptions of the myth of race. Now, before I close up, I just want to say I, you can use this genetic information to track more recent uh, ancestry. You can find out who's 
paternity, you can find out who's related to you, a, a lost sister, whatever. You, most of you have heard about the Iceman in the Alps. You read it in the paper and all that, the frozen guy. Well, they analyzed his DNA. And they went back to their data bank, and they found these people have the same genetic markers as him. In fact, they're the direct ancestors or descendants of the Iceman. And they can do the same for you. And for one of you or more of you in this room might be uh, a descendant. And our good friend and leader and respected uh, president, Thomas Jefferson. Here are his current today direct ancestors or descendants, excuse me. And one of the African Americans were from Sally Hemings, his slave, who he freed at the end of his death and freed all the children and everybody else. After his first wife died, Jefferson fell in love with Sally, took her to Europe with him when he was ambassador to France, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the full true generation. Now, I have some sage advice as I conclude because I love this slide. I have it in my office. When you're in deep trouble, stay calm, look straight ahead, keep your mouth shut, don't say anything, and act like a member of the pack. Thank you very much.